What's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to be going over the assembly and installation of the chassis details, body details, and the included beadlock wheels and tires. This will take you from page 19 to the end of the included manual. For the next steps, you'll need bags G1 and G2. In the box, you'll find these pre-cut inner fender wells for the front and rear of the VS410. Now, before this video started, I actually had these fender wells painted black to prepare for this assembly. Starting with the rear, we're going to take the rear bumper from the die cut foam and place it into the rear of the chassis. With the rear bumper in place, we're going to locate the rear inner fender well and we're going to attach it to the chassis. The holes for attaching the inner fender well to the chassis are also pre-cut. With a small amount of thread lock on the M3x10 hardware, use this to attach the inner fender well to the chassis and bumpers. We need to repeat the same process with the front bumper as well. Place the front bumper into the chassis first and then locate the front inner fender well. With a small amount of thread lock on the M3x10 hardware, use this to attach the inner fender well to the chassis and bumpers. Once you've done this, you need to repeat the process on the other side. Once you have all four of the inner fender wells on, then you need to remove the rock sliders from the die cut foam. The left side has an L engraved and that also represents the driver's side. Apply a small amount of thread lock to your M3x10 hardware and slide it into place in the rock slider first. With the hardware installed into the rock slider, then get the rock slider into position and put your driver through the hole in the side of the rock slider's face. Repeat these same steps for the passenger side as well. Now locate the bag of body support pieces. Next we're going to install the body supports. There's four body supports along each side of the rock sliders. When installing the body support, make sure that the face of the body support is riding along the edge inside of the rock slider. This will make sure that it keeps it in the proper alignment. The two center body supports simply screw down into the slider. The two outside body supports sandwich the inner fender well down onto the slider, holding it in place. With those body supports sandwiching the inner fender well in place, you'll feel that that inner fender well got much more rigid. We need to repeat this same process on the passenger side now. Next, we're going to install the battery and electronics tray into the chassis. We're gonna start by attaching the electronics tray in the front with the two M3x10 pieces of flathead hardware that were included in the hardware bag. These will be the two longest flathead screws in that bag. Next, we're going to loosely attach the four M3x10 screws that go around the outside of the battery and electronics tray. This is a stamped piece of aluminum that is then bent, so we want to make sure that we get all of the hardware in place before we tighten it down. Once you've got all of the hardware in place, then go back in and tighten it all down. Some Vanquish battery straps are also included in the parts bag to secure the battery to this battery plate. Fish it in through the top slot and then pull it through the bottom. And the last step on the chassis is to install the Delrin skid plates onto the blower boat sides. Hold the skid plate into place and then tighten it to the chassis with the M3 by 10 flathead screw. Moving on to the body portion, we'll need to open up H1 next. The interior does come pre-cut and clear. Again, for the purpose of this video, I've already gone ahead and had this painted and the decals applied. First, we need to locate the steering wheel and the steering column. Attach the steering wheel to the steering column with an M3x10 flathead screw. Attach the steering column to the dash through the two holes on the bottom. You'll use the 164 screws and your 1 16th inch driver to do this. Loosely tighten both of these screws before cinching either of them down all the way. You will need to bend the dash slightly out of the way to complete this. Next, we're gonna locate the shifter and shifter base. To attach the shifter to the vehicle, we wanna use this molded washer that goes on the bottom side of the interior. Loosely install each screw again before tightening either of them down all the way. To install the dash into the interior base, we need to cut three small strips of the foam tape that's included with the kit. 
attach it towards the back side of the dash. Once you have all three pieces in place, peel off the backing and then line up the dash and press it into place. The dash does have a gap on the back side that is by design and you will see how that lines up with the body. For the next step, we're gonna move on to the body, but just like the inner fender wells and the interior, I've got a pre-painted body done for the purpose of the video. Now we need to locate the injection molded grill, radiator and radiator fans to install into the body. Before attaching the radiator onto the injection molded grill, we're going to attach the radiator fans and fan shrouds. Insert the fan into the fan shroud and then place that assembly onto the radiator. Attach it in place with an M3x10 flathead screw. With the radiator assembly completed, we're now going to attach this to the body. Install the radiator into the car with the M3x6 screws. Next, we need to locate the front light buckets. These light buckets are made to accept a 10 millimeter LED. Now, I do not have the LEDs in hand right now, but the LED holder is included on the parts tree and we are going to install that first. If you're going to install the LEDs, you would put the LEDs in first and then put in the LED retainer. The LED retainer is held in with two 164 screws. With that light bucket assembled, we can now place it behind the grill and then attach it through the grill with four 164 screws. Next, we're going to remove two of these light buckets from the tree and two of the five millimeter LED retainers. These will become our rear tail light buckets. Again, we're going to attach the five millimeter LED retainers onto the bucket first. Then remove these two trim bezels from the details tree. These parts have a one and a two molded on the back side. Make sure to note that. The ring with the number one on the back goes on the driver's side. Also note that the one goes towards the top and it goes to the inside so you don't actually see the one. Place the trim ring in the rear taillight bezel and move the rear inner taillight housing into position. Next, we'll install the windshield wipers and also we'll need to make sure to get two more of the washers for the inside of the body. The windshield wipers have pre-cut holes on the cowl. Insert one of the 164 screws through the plastic washer and then attach the windshield wiper from the inside. Now to attach the interior to the body. Foam tape is provided and you can add three pieces along the length of the interior to hold this securely into place. The interior is also physically held to the body with the door handle screws. For now, I'm going to forego adding the foam tape because I may want to remove this at a later date and add some other accessories in here. We're gonna cut off these two larger plates these are our backing washers for the door handles and what helps hold the interior in place. And we also need to remove the two door handles. I'm going to place my 164 screws through the plates first and then through the back side of the interior. Then I'm going to place the door handle through the body and line up all of the pieces. Without a lot of weight added from excess accessories inside the interior, holding it in with just the door handles works pretty well. The last detail part we have is the filler cap. The hole for this piece is not drilled. You can put it wherever you like or completely omit it if you don't want it. I'm going to choose to put it right here just behind the driver's door. I'm gonna drill a 1 16th inch hole for my mounting position. We will also need another washer to back this. For our final steps, we need to open bag I1 and mount the beadlock wheels to the new Vanquish VXT tires. Place the center wheel into the center of the tire. Begin to get the bead surface seated into the beadlock groove. Once you have all of the tires mounted to the wheels, you need to mount one of the two hubs that are included in the kit to the stub axle. I suggest using the narrower of the two hubs that are included. 
This is the proper width for this truck with this size tires and these bumpers and sliders. Once it's attached to the stub axle with the M4 lock nut, you can then place the beadlock wheel onto that hub. At that time, you need to grab one of the hub washers and an optional center cap. If you choose to use the center cap, place it through the back side of the hub washer and then attach this entire assembly and the beadlock wheel to the hub with the 256 screws that are included. And lastly, it's just a matter of putting the body down into position and adding the four body pins to hold it in place. Just note to make sure that the body goes behind those rock sliders to make sure that it's held properly in the position that it's intended. And that completes the entire assembly of the Vanquish VS410 Origin Limited.